So far in these discipleship lessons, you have learned several things about your new relationship to Jesus Christ. You have learned that when you got saved, you became a child of God, that you were spiritually born again, that you are eternally secure, that you need to be baptized as a testimony of your salvation, and that you need to witness or testify of the presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Today, you're going to learn about pleasing, fearing, loving, and obeying God. These are four principal things that you can do to strengthen your relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's the first one, pleasing God. According to the Bible, everything was created by God for the express purpose of pleasing Him. We find that in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, which says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. The trouble with men, though, in general, is that we want to please ourselves. As 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 and 4 show us, men shall be lovers of their own selves, and they are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Well, you know something? You can't be a lover of pleasure and a love of yourself and please God at the same time. That's not possible. When we please ourselves, we cannot please God. In truth, our supreme satisfaction in this life is actually in learning to please God. And to do that, we have to cut some things and ties with earthly things that keep us from being able to please Him. Like Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You see, when you cut ties with earthly pleasures, you can then make ties with heavenly pleasures. And when you do, you're going to find that there is more pleasure in pleasing God than in pleasing yourself. After all, we are far better off following the examples of Jesus Christ than we are trying to chart our own path of pleasure. Jesus said, I do always those things that please Him. And if it worked for Jesus, it'll surely work for you. All right, now here's the second thing, fearing God. Psalm 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is a doctrine but it's a doctrine that's a little hard to grasp at first because you're saved, you think, well, what do I have to be afraid of God for? Well, if we look at the doctrine simply, we can see some very understandable reasons why we need to fear God. For instance, it is the fear of God that convinces a man that hell is real and causes him to look to Jesus for the way out. The fear of God keeps a man from falling for the false teaching of evolution. The Bible says over and over again that God created the heaven and the earth. If a man fears God, he will believe that and won't be deceived by scientists who say that God didn't. When a man fears God, he won't fear men and their idolatrous religions and their false doctrines. They wouldn't dare use a statue as an aid to worship or follow a religion of man's invention. For a Christian, the fear of God reminds him moment by moment of his accountability to God. Romans chapter 4 verse 12 or 14 verse 12 says, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We often think of the early church as the ideal church. So if you go back and look in Acts chapter 2 and verse 43, you know what you see? You see that in addition to all of the wonderful sacrificial things they did, they also feared God. As a matter of fact, Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 2 verses 12 and 13, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. If Christians truly feared God today, you know what? We wouldn't be in the doctrinal mess we're in right now. So fear God. The next thing you want to know about is loving God. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 and 5 and Matthew chapter 22 verses 36 to 38, you know what? We find out an unmistakably 
clear command on this very subject. The Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And lest you should think that this is just an Old Testament doctrine, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. Our relationship with Jesus started because he demonstrated the greatest love anyone could ever have for us. He said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He said that in John chapter 15, verse 13. And as a result, we are compelled to reciprocate his love. Ultimately, our highest objective should be to fall in love with the Lord and enjoy a continually growing love for Him through our entire Christian lives. Like Romans 5.5 5 says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. And as we fall in love with the Lord, the motive then for doing things that please Him will not be so much our fear of Him, but it will be more so our love for him. So love him. And then the next thing we want to show you about is obeying God. God has specific things that he wants us to do and these things are clearly stated in his words. Therefore it is compulsory that we learn what these are and then do them in obedience to his will. In John chapter 14 verse 21 and John chapter 14 verse 23 the Bible says he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And if a man love me, he will keep my words. God has recorded his words for us in writing, and he wants us to obey them. And you will if you truly love God. There's pressure today, however, to obey the will of people rather than the will of God. But nowhere in the Bible is this problem more clearly illustrated than in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 through 24. You know what happened? Saul disobeyed God. And when he did, Samuel came to him and rebuked him for his disobedience. Here's, what's, uh, here's what happened and here's what Samuel said. Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Man, that's tough. Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Just like Saul blamed his fear of the people for his disobedience, you might try to excuse your disobedience by blaming peer pressure. But as you can see, pointing the finger at others is no excuse for disobedience. You must obey God without regard to whether anyone else around you obeys him or not. Now, if you can keep working at these four supreme objectives in your relationship with God, you're going to live a wonderfully fulfilling life with Jesus Christ. So remember, please God, fear God, love God, and obey God, and you will be a happy Christian. May God bless you.